Life Audio. Hello, thank you for listening to your daily Bible verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Carol McCracken, and after a short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, Hebrews 4 1. Today's Bible verse is Hebrews 4 1. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. I'm sitting here stressed right now. I know I'm supposed to turn my cares to Jesus, but I'm waiting for that to kick in. Intellectually, I know that's because my mind is still trying to figure out how to fix the situation quickly, but it's out of my hands. I'm a wedding planner. And after repeated trouble with the wedding structure, now the poles of the tent the company needs aren't coming in on time. The rental company solution isn't working. And I wait. My customer has a contract to be fulfilled the way they want it. So I confess to you that I'm waiting for the peace. Scripture tells me I can cast all my fears on him because he cares for me. So I'm in the process of remembering that God is way more capable than I am. And I'll just sit back and try to rest in that. And that's enough. Because being real with God is what he wants. And I expect that my emotions will catch up to my brain with a little help from him. See, friends, we're all human. And we aren't alone in the struggle. So here's a reminder to take a breath. Stress happens. But sometimes not being in control works out for the best. As I try to rest in that, what does rest really mean anyway? In today's Bible verse, the author of Hebrews addresses new Christians who grew up with the Jewish faith. Because they observed the religious laws, which had many rituals, scholars speculate that they may have felt unholy to approach God. They were moving back to ritual, which was no longer necessary because Jesus Christ had defeated death as the ultimate once and for all sacrifice on the cross. The previous law didn't save as Jesus did. In the previous verse, Hebrews 3.19, the author of Hebrews gave an example that his current Jewish readers would understand from their treasured history. Moses led a generation of Jews out of slavery in Egypt to the promised land that was to be their inheritance. There, they'd find rest, physical rest. But that generation didn't have faith in God and were too afraid to cross over into that promised land. This was pointed out as a lack of trust or unbelief in what God could do. Therefore, they never got to rest. God promised the land to Abraham's descendants, but it was a conditional promise requiring the people to believe in God and his love and provision for them. This unbelief resulted in disobedience. The first generation of the Exodus refused to go into the land God promised them. The author of Hebrews knew his readers would be able to relate to this. The Hebrew word for rest is kataposis, which means a place of blessing, where there's no striving and only relaxation in the presence of God. There's no fear. God promises us rest. Ultimately, we'll have it when Jesus Christ comes again. This gives us hope, hope that God does what he says he's going to do. For the people reading Hebrews, we and they are told there's no turning back to the old ways. Jesus is superior to anything else only Jesus can save. We're to be careful that we don't ignore what this means. We should not fear. But what happens when we do? The good news is that no one knows us better than Jesus. He knows our hearts, thoughts, and motivations. And he encourages us to turn to him so he can give us rest. This rest isn't a stopping of activity. God created us for a purpose and wants to work with us. But we are also human beings. Jesus can relate to this because he was one once with all the emotions that go with it. But Jesus always turned to the Father, his Father and ours, God. We don't have to accomplish everything ourselves. This was brought home to me when I read an application in a Bible study I'm doing with my prayer partner, 
by Jen Wilkin. She posed the question with the leading statement that really got me. Our unbelief often manifests as some form of self-reliance. Think about your own life. What area of self-reliant unbelief keeps you from fully enjoying the rest granted to you in Christ? Wow. I'm an independent person, and this threw me back to a hard time in my life. The challenges of trying to raise a child with special needs challenged my marriage, and I began to rely on alcohol to cope. I felt like I had to fix everything myself. It can be hard to think straight when you're in the middle of something like this. I just wanted the fear to stop, and I isolated and medicated with the alcohol, which of course solved nothing. The problems were still there. So I have no judgment here for anything like that that anyone else is going through. But I know how that kind of fear feels. I tried to fix my alcohol problem myself. Suffice it to say, it didn't work. But when I obeyed God and surrendered, he took my cravings away. Oh, I still worked steps and had hard work to do, but God gave me rest. Self-reliance and striving aren't what Jesus wants for us. Living in fear isn't what he wants either. We all have something, don't we? That's the way of this broken world. But there's rest for God's people. He promises that. God doesn't want you to be deprived. He wants you to have abundance, blessing, and relaxation in his presence. Let's pray. Dear Lord in heaven, thank you for this life that you've given us. Thank you for understanding that we as your created beings are flawed. And Lord, we don't want to exhibit unbelief. Help us with our unbelief. We want to be like you, Lord, and sometimes we go too far and we act as our own little gods. We're self-reliant and we fear. And you don't want us to fear because you tell us that we don't have to fix it, that we have to lean on you. And sometimes you don't fix the situation, but you lead us through it in the right way where we can have rest in you. Lord, make yourself known to us. Turn our heads back to you when we stray and remind us it's not all up to us. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. 